There are two kinds of extreme market structures. The first is perfect competition, where lots of small firms produce the same good and there's free entry and exit into the market. In that market structure, no single firm has any market power. The other extreme case is the case of pure monopoly, where a single firm produces a good that has no close substitutes, and that firm is protected from competition by barriers to entry that keep other firms out of the market. That kind of firm has a lot of market power, and we already know how that kind of firm is going to decide how much to produce. It's going to find its demand curve, which in this case is the market demand curve because there's only one firm in the industry. From that, it's going to derive its marginal revenue curve, and it's going to find where that intersects its marginal cost curve, which we've assumed is perfectly horizontal here. At that intersection, it's going to locate the profit maximizing quantity, which we'll call the monopoly quantity. Now we want to think about what's going to happen if instead of a single firm that's protected by barriers to entry, there are several firms that are in an industry that compete with one another, but that are protected by barriers to entry from any outside competition of potential new firms. That kind of market structure we're going to call an oligopoly. And we're going to start with an oligopoly that only has two firms in it, which is sometimes called a duopoly. Now each firm in that oligopoly is going to have to decide how much to produce, knowing that the price that's going to emerge in the market is going to emerge from the sum of what the two firms produce. So each firm is going to compete with the other by setting the quantity it produces, and the price is going to emerge in the market from the decisions that both firms make. That's what we call quantity competition. So how would a firm think about how much it should produce in an oligopoly of this kind? So let's think about firm one. Firm one knows what the market demand curve is. That's the same curve we had over here. And now suppose that Firm 1 thinks that Firm 2 is going to produce a quantity x2 bar. Now it knows that the market demand isn't its demand curve anymore, because Firm 2 is taking part of that market demand. So it has to subtract what Firm 2 is producing from the market demand to find out how much demand is left over for itself. For firm 1. So once we subtract this quantity that firm 2 is producing, we'll get a new demand curve. We sometimes call that a residual demand curve. It's the demand that's left over for firm 1. Now once firm 1 knows what its demand curve is, it knows what its marginal revenue curve is. The marginal revenue always starts at the same intercept as the demand curve, but has twice the slope. So we would now have a marginal revenue curve for firm 1, given that firm 2 is producing this quantity. Now we just need the marginal cost, and we'll continue to assume that the marginal cost is just constant. The firm is going to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. It's going to produce this quantity. Let's call it x1 bar. We would now say that firm 1's best response to firm 2 producing x2 bar is to produce this x1 bar. But of course we could think about other quantities that firm 2 could produce and what the best response for firm 1 would be then. If firm 2 produces less than this, that green arrow would be shorter. That demand curve wouldn't shift by as much, and so the marginal revenue curve would lie further out and would intersect the marginal cost at the greater quantity. In other words, the less firm 2 produces, the greater the best response for firm 1 will be in terms of how much to produce. And similarly, the more firm 2 produces, the bigger that error is going to be, and the less firm 1 is going to produce as a best response. So now we're going to draw a different graph. On the horizontal axis, we're going to put the quantity that firm 1 produces. And on the vertical axis, we'll put the quantity that firm 2 produces. 
we've already seen that if firm 2 produces this quantity, then firm 1's best response is to produce this quantity. So that gives us one point on what we call firm 1's best response function. If firm 2 produces that quantity, firm 1 will produce this quantity. What if firm 2 produces more? If firm 2 produces more, we could already see that firm 1 is going to want to produce less. And if firm 2 produces less, we've already seen that firm 1 is going to want to produce more. So we have a sense already that this best response function that tells us for any x2 what the best response for firm 1 is going to be, is going to be a downward sloping curve. Where is it going to intersect the axes? Well, suppose that firm 2 produces nothing. If firm 2 produces nothing, then firm 1's demand is the market demand. There's nothing to subtract. Firm 1 is then a monopoly. And we already know what a monopoly would do. It's going to produce the monopoly quantity. So if firm 2 produces nothing, then we already know that firm 1 is going to best respond by producing the monopoly quantity. Now what if firm 2 produces a quantity that drives price to marginal cost. We know that that's twice the monopoly quantity because the marginal revenue curve has the twice the slope of the demand curve. So the demand curve is going to intersect this marginal cost curve twice as far out as the marginal revenue curve. So if firm 2 produces twice the monopoly quantity, it will already have driven price to marginal cost. If firm 1 then decides to produce on top of that, it's going to drive price even below marginal cost. And that would create losses. So if firm 2 decides to drive the price to marginal cost by producing twice the monopoly quantity, firm 1's best response is to produce nothing. If it produced anything, it would drive price below marginal cost and make a loss. So now we have another point on firm 1's best response function to firm 2. Now we can connect all of these points, and it turns out they lie on a straight line. They lie on a straight line because we've assumed everything is linear in these industries, and that results in a straight line best response function for firm 1 which will denote by best response for firm 1. What that tells us is for any quantity of x2, what firm 1's best response will be. If firm 2 produces a lot, firm 1's best response is to produce nothing. As firm 2 produces less, firm 1's best response is to produce more. Until we get to the point where firm 2 is producing nothing, in which case firm 1's best response is to just behave as a monopoly.